Story 1, Subway of Shadows. The subway had always been my daily routine, a labyrinth of tunnels and secrets hidden beneath the bustling city. I thought I knew every corner of it, every echoing scream of the trains as they tore through the darkness. But one fateful night, as the clock ticked toward midnight, I discovered that there were still horrors lurking in the subterranean depths that I had never imagined. I descended the grimy steps into the station, the usual graffiti-covered walls and flickering lights greeting me. It was a quiet night, just a handful of weary commuters like myself making their way home. The platform was almost deserted, and I could hear my own footsteps echoing through the cavernous tunnel. I settled onto a bench, pulling my coat tight around me as the frigid air seeped in from the tracks. I glanced at the digital display, indicating the next train was due in three minutes. I leaned back, closed my eyes, and let the rhythmic rumble of the approaching train lull me into a sense of security. But as the train's headlights pierced the darkness and it roared into the station, I realized something was terribly wrong. The doors opened with a hiss, and a putrid stench filled the carriage. It was a sickening blend of decay and something far more sinister, a smell that seemed to crawl up my nose and claw at my brain. I hesitated, considering waiting for the next train, but a sudden feeling of unease gnawed at my gut. I couldn't explain it, but it was as if the subway itself was compelling me to step inside. I reluctantly entered the carriage, my heart pounding like a sledgehammer against my chest. The interior was dimly lit, the flickering fluorescent lights casting eerie shadows that danced on the peeling wallpaper. Every seat was empty except one. In the far corner, a man sat hunched over, his face obscured by the hood of his tattered coat. He didn't move, didn't acknowledge my presence. I took a deep breath, trying to shake off the unease that gripped me. I told myself it was just a weird guy, probably homeless, seeking shelter from the cold. I took a seat as far away from him as possible and tried to focus on my phone, but the stench in the air made it impossible to concentrate. The train lurched into motion and I stole a glance at the hooded figure. His hands were hidden in the folds of his coat and he remained completely still. It was unnerving, but I convinced myself that it was just paranoia playing tricks on me. As the train rumbled through the dark tunnels, I felt a growing sense of dread. The other passengers who had boarded at various stops seemed just as uneasy as I was. They huddled together, whispering nervously. No one dared to approach the hooded man in the corner. Suddenly, the lights overhead flickered and went out. Panic swept through the carriage like a tidal wave, and I could hear the terrified screams of the passengers around me. I fumbled for my phone, using its weak flashlight to cast a feeble glow in the darkness. In the dim light, I saw the hooded man had moved. He was now standing in the center of the carriage, his hood still concealing his face. His body seemed to sway unnaturally, as if he was floating rather than walking. Who are you? I stammered, my voice barely more than a whisper. No response. The hooded figure continued to sway, and I could see something glinting in his hand. It was a long, wicked-looking knife. A guttural, inhuman growl emanated from beneath the hood. The other passengers were frozen in terror, their eyes wide with fear. I knew I had to do something, but fear had me in its grip too. With a sudden jerking motion, the hooded figure raised the knife and plunged it into the chest of the nearest passenger. Blood sprayed across the carriage, and the victim's screams were cut short as they collapsed to the floor. The other passengers erupted into chaos, scrambling over each other in a desperate bid to escape. I couldn't move. I couldn't look away from the gruesome scene unfolding before me. The hooded figure moved on, slashing and stabbing with brutal precision. The screams and pleas for mercy filled the air, but they went unanswered. I finally snapped out of my paralysis and bolted towards the nearest exit, my heart pounding in my chest. But the hooded figure was faster. He lunged at me, the blade slicing through the air. I ducked just in time, feeling the rush of wind as the knife passed inches from my face. 
I stumbled out of the carriage, my heart racing and ran through the dark tunnel, not looking back. The screams and cries of the other passengers echoed in my ears as I sprinted towards the nearest station. I didn't stop until I reached the surface, gasping for breath and drenched in sweat. The police were called and an investigation was launched, but the hooded figure was never found. The subway resumed its normal operation as if nothing had happened. But I knew the truth. The subway had its own dark secrets and I had unwittingly stumbled into a nightmare that still haunts my every step. To this day, I can't shake the feeling that the hooded figure is still down there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the next unsuspecting passenger to descend into the subway's depths, never to return. Story 2. The Haunting Echoes of Abandonment It was a chilling autumn evening when my two friends, Mike and John and I, decided to explore the infamous abandoned metro station on the outskirts of town. We had heard countless stories about the place, whispers of eerie echoes, chilling screams, and unsettling mysteries that had shrouded the station since its closure. Armed with flashlights and trembling excitement, we ventured into the unknown. The station appeared exactly as we had imagined. A hauntingly desolate place where time had stood still. Graffiti covered the decaying walls, and the only light came from our feeble beams. Dust hung in the air, and cobwebs clung to the ceiling, like ancient guardians of a long-forgotten secret. We made our way down the decrepit stairs to the platform, feeling a sense of foreboding that seemed to grow with each step. The platform was empty, save for a few discarded newspapers from decades past. It was eerily silent, a silence that pressed down upon us, making it hard to breathe. As we moved deeper into the station, our flashlights occasionally caught fleeting movements in the shadows, phantom shapes that seemed to dance and disappear as quickly as they appeared. My heart raced, and I exchanged uneasy glances with Mike and John. We were not alone down here. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream echoed through the tunnel. It was a gut-wrenching sound, one that sent shivers down our spines and paralyzed us in place. The screams seemed to come from all directions, filling the station with an unsettling cacophony. Did you hear that? John whispered, his voice trembling. We nodded in response, unable to find words to articulate the fear that had gripped us. The darkness around us seemed to thicken, and the temperature dropped, sending a shiver through our bodies. Another scream, louder and more desperate, shattered the silence. It was unmistakably human, and it was coming from deeper within the tunnel. Our instincts screamed at us to run, but morbid curiosity held us in place. Maybe someone needs help. Mike said, his voice wavering. We exchanged one last glance, and then, as if compelled by an unseen force, we followed the source of the screams. The tunnel twisted and turned, the flickering beams of our flashlights revealing graffiti-covered walls that seemed to writhe with grotesque images. The screams grew louder, more agonizing. We reached a section of the tunnel where the walls were covered in handprints, as though people had desperately clawed at them in a futile attempt to escape. The realization hit us like a sledgehammer. This place held a dark and sinister history. The tunnel opened into a vast underground chamber, the source of the screams now deafening. In the center of the chamber stood an old, rusted subway car. Its doors were wide open, revealing an unsettling sight. Inside the subway car were rows upon rows of ghostly figures, their faces contorted in anguish. They were the souls of commuters who had met a tragic end here, trapped for all eternity. Their screams filled the chamber, an unbearable symphony of suffering. Before our horrified eyes, the figures turned toward us, their hollow eyes locking onto ours. The screams became accusing, as if they blamed us for their torment. Panic surged through me, and I turned to flee only to find the tunnel had vanished, leaving us trapped with the vengeful spirits. Desperation clawed at my chest as the ghostly figures closed in on us, their wails drowning out all reason. 
It was as if we had become a part of their eternal nightmare, forever bound to the abandoned metro station and its dark, unsolved mysteries. In that chilling moment, I realized the true horror of our decision to explore this forsaken place. The abandoned metro station was not just haunted, it was a portal to a realm of endless suffering, and we had unwittingly become its newest prisoners. Story 3. The Midnight Metro The subway had always been a place of routine for me, a familiar underground maze of steel and shadows, but one fateful night, I descended the station steps to a scene of eerie abandonment. The platform was devoid of life, and a thick fog shrouded the tracks. The train arrived with an unsettling screech, its doors creaking open like the gates to an otherworldly realm. I stepped inside hesitantly, the cold air sending shivers down my spine. The interior was unlike any subway car I had seen before, with faded, grotesque murals adorning the walls, depicting nightmarish scenes. The doors sealed with a heavy thud and the train jerked into motion. Panic gripped my chest as I realized I was the only passenger on board. The usual hum of conversations was absent, replaced by an eerie silence. A voice crackled to life over the intercom, its tone sinister and cold. Welcome to the Midnight Metro, it whispered. Solve the puzzles or face the consequences. I was alone, and the train seemed to stretch infinitely in both directions. The lights flickered ominously, casting eerie dancing shadows. The first puzzle awaited me. A cryptic message scrawled on the window, written in blood-red letters. As I deciphered the message, the train's temperature plummeted, and I could see my breath in the frosty air. I worked quickly, the answer forming in my mind, just in time to prevent my teeth from chattering. The train came to a sudden halt, and the intercom voice returned, colder and more threatening. Your journey is far from over, it hissed. Proceed to the next car. With dread clawing at my chest, I moved through the empty cars, each one darker and more unsettling than the last. At the end of one, I found a door unlike the others. It was adorned with intricate symbols that seemed to pulse with malevolent energy. In my trembling hand, I held a small key I'd found on my seat. With a deep breath, I inserted it into the lock. The door swung open to reveal a nightmarish realm, a train car filled with grotesque mannequins, their lifeless eyes fixed upon me. The intercom crackled to life once more, mocking laughter echoing through the car. To proceed, find the one that watches without eyes. The mannequins were unnervingly lifelike, and their cold gazes seemed to follow my every move. As I examined each one, I spotted a peculiar figure hidden among them, a mannequin with empty sockets where its eyes should have been. I approached it cautiously, my pulse quickening. With trembling hands, I reached into one of the eyeless sockets and retrieved a small, ornate key. The laughter of the intercom grew louder as I exited the room. The puzzles grew more intricate and sinister with each passing car. My heart pounded, and I could feel the eyes of unseen watchers upon me. The train itself seemed to be alive, a malevolent entity toying with my sanity. Hours turned into days as I navigated the dark maze of the midnight metro. I solved puzzles that defied logic and confronted horrors that challenged my very existence. The intercom taunted me with cryptic messages, promising both salvation and damnation. Finally, I reached the last car, a cavernous chamber filled with ominous symbols and flickering torches. At its center stood a massive scale, one side laden with gold coins, the other with an intricate jeweled crown. The intercom's voice returned colder and more malicious than ever. Choose wisely, for your fate hangs in the balance. With trembling hands, I made my choice, placing the crown on the scale. The chamber trembled, and the intercom's laughter filled the air as the train came to a sudden, jarring halt. 
The doors opened, revealing the familiar subway station. I stumbled out, disoriented and shaken, as the train disappeared into the tunnel, leaving behind only an echoing, malevolent laughter. The midnight metro had shown me the depths of fear and despair, a place of haunted puzzles and dark mysteries that no one should ever experience. To this day, I wonder if it was a nightmare or a twisted reality, a place where the boundary between life and death blurred into a never-ending nightmare.